but I thought, you know what, I'm planning on making or baking a new recipe today and uh, I thought what I'd do is just talk about health, mental health, anti-inflammatory diets and substituting to meet your dietary requirements. I am not a chef, I am a person who has chronic pain and illness and a therapist, so I feel like I can talk a little bit to the mental health side. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I also am somebody who substitutes a lot of things to make recipes into something that I can eat. Why did I change my diet? Well, I wanted to experiment to see if it would help with any of my symptoms, and it really has. It's um, actually part of the reason that my ANA is super low now, um, and definitely I think has helped with overall pain and just kind of helping me move my illness into remission. Kind of beyond, and, and there's a lot of evidence that Playing with diet, especially anti-inflammatory things within your diet, has been helpful for many, many people it, with chronic illnesses so, and chronic pain. So I think it's just really important from like a general health perspective, especially if you are struggling with a health condition, to at least look into what you could do to shift it. So um, for me, I cut out gluten, dairy, um, and meat, basically, other than fish or seafood. Um, and I am not super, super strict on any of this. I am pretty flexible in that when I cook for myself, I will follow these rules. When I go to someone's house, if they have the things I can eat, great. If they don't, sometimes I will just eat what's there. Um, if I go to a restaurant, again, they have the things that I eat, I'll get them. If not, get what's there. Or if I'm really craving something, probably give it. I think that flexibility is the easiest way to maintain something like this, at least for me. and. I, I'm gonna guess probably for some other people as well because I know a lot of people struggle to make these shifts. From a mental health perspective, um, anti-inflammatory diets can also help with things like depression. It's not my exact area of expertise, but there are been some a number of books written on this subject where it, depression is kind of inflammation in the brain. The brain doesn't quite inflame the same way our joints inflame, um, but it's using an anti-inflammatory diet, especially if you're already using it for something else, can be very, very helpful for depression as well. And also, there's no harm in trying it, even if it doesn't work, right? Because it's it's just a, a different way of eating and a, typically a healthy way of eating anyway. So let's talk a bit about substituting and what you can do. So I'm making a cookie recipe. Um, and of course, they're gonna ask for things like regular flour. So I haven't bought regular flour in a long time. I have two different types of gluten-free flour with me. So this type and this type. So the difference between these two types is this one has xanthan gum in it, um, and this one doesn't. So typically what I find is when I use, so when you look at a recipe and they tell you to substitute, they almost always say it's one for one. Yeah, I would say yes and no. Um, <laughs> the ones with xanthan gum are definitely closer to the one for one. Um, the ones without, I would say you actually need less flour to kind of the, fl the flour versus wet ingredients um, because gluten-free flour tends to be a lot drier. And so we would want to just kind of manipulate it. There was some experimentation. It took me a while to figure this out. Um, and all I did was just experiment with <laughs> how much I was putting in. Um, but I definitely prefer, you know, if you don't want it to be on the dry side, you're gonna use less flour than what the recipe calls for. So um, so for example, if it calls for um, a cup of flour, you might use like three quarters of a cup or so. Again, a bit of experimentation. I kind of look at the way the batter looks and if it looks like cookie batter is supposed to look or if you're doing a cake, cake batter is supposed to look um, and you haven't quite put as much flour as they were called for it, it's probably good. Um, if it's starting to look like the proportions are a bit off or it doesn't look like it, how it would normally look if you were using regular flour, then you may have put a little too much. Again, this is kind of based on my opinion and experience. Not an expert, not an expert baker. I like to bake, but you know. Um, the other thing I tend to do is, so I don't go, I'm not sugar free, um, though I definitely try to limit the amount of sugar that I have. And I'm sorry, my hair is getting face. And, <laughs> So when I look at the amount of sugar called for in a recipe, uh, whether it's brown sugar or white sugar, sort of speak calls for both, 
I would usually put a bit less in. Um, how much a bit less is really depends. For the recipe I haven't done before, I will probably put closer to the, the you know, suggested amount. It's like recipes or suggestions. The suggested amount in the recipe. Um, if, if I've, for example, when I make pancakes, I will put very, very little sugar in because I'm gonna have table syrup on it anyway, so I don't really know the point of putting a lot of sugar in this. But so you could experiment a bit with that as well, um, but I'll probably go closer to on this recipe. And then um, I'm not doing this, the recipe dairy-free. Um, normally what I do if I was making like chocolate chip cookies or something like that, it calls for like, milk, for example, any recipe that calls for, calls for regular milk, I'll just direct substitute one for one with um, almond milk or um, oat milk, whatever kind of dairy-free, gluten-free milk you wanna use. Um, I, I don't have eggs for this recipe because I don't buy eggs. I don't eat eggs, love eggs, miss eggs, don't eat eggs. Um, they don't tend to actually bother me when they're in um, baking. Uh, that's, that's not, it's not ever an issue. It's just that I don't buy eggs anyway. So I was like, I went to the store and looked at the eggs and I was like, I could buy a small carton for, specifically for this recipe, but I only need two eggs. And it seems like, <laughs> it seems silly to buy it, like even six eggs when I only need two. What am I going to do with the other four? So, um, instead of eggs, I will be using applesauce. So, how much applesauce do you need? It's approximately a quarter cup per egg. Um, and so, I think there's like just over half, about half a cup in this. Anyways, I will use a measuring cup for that. <coughs> Um, and apparently I need to drink some water or something and not get it in my mouth. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how I'm going to kind of work with this recipe. Um, I'm not going to take you guys through all the steps to make this recipe. I've never made it before. Somebody else's recipe you found it on the internet. It looks really cute. We'll show you the finished product though. So I will be back in a few. I don't know if cooking makes anybody else hot, but like I lost my t-shirt, hair is up. And I have made the cookies with the modified recipe. They're delicious. This is what they look like. I will definitely link the actual recipe the person who made it uh, in below. Um, but yeah, so basically what I ended up doing is I used, like I said, just slightly less of the um, flour. It wasn't significant amount less, about, about a quarter cup less than what the recipe called for. Um, the, that one little cup of um, applesauce, I was correct, was exactly uh, the equivalent of two eggs. So that works really well. Uh, Sugar-wise, I definitely use less sugar than the recipe called for. Um, again, I just don't like things quite as sweet and I think that they're still pretty sweet. So, um, especially because this particular recipe, so this is not dairy for a recipe because you use ice, um, uh, frosting, that's what it's called. Um, and you would inject it into the cookies. Um, that being said, I think there are such things as dairy-free frosting, so I just couldn't find any at the store where I went, my area, but if there is the option, you could totally make this completely like vegan, essentially, um, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, I hope that this helps you guys just to continue on with any changes, lifestyle changes that you're trying to make, um, which can help your both physical and mental health. In that case, Take care and keep making the most.